There's no way that man will come here. I wish I could be so certain, sissy. What reason would he have to come after a beautiful blonde innkeeper named Patricia Meadows? Tony Osorio found me. Oh, that's only because he followed you after you got out and went to the plastic surgeon. Ben can be just as resourceful. There's no question about it now. I can't get involved with Joe. Oh, Patricia. Even if he could accept what I've done, he could become Ben's next target. I can't see him end up like Harry. Mm -hmm. Sissy? Oh, Joe. I just heard about Ben Cronin. I want you to know if he shows up here, I'll make sure he doesn't come near you. Thanks, Joe. But I really think we have nothing to worry about. I mean, now that he's out of jail, he's going to want to stay free, right? Mm. And the charges against him were dropped. There's nothing to blame you for. I really think we're just worrying for nothing. Joe, can I see you alone? There's something we need to talk about. Well, good morning. Good morning. I shouldn't have let you talk me into this. Talk you into what? This, me meeting you for breakfast. Well, I don't think it's going to break me, but uh, if you're feeling especially guilty, there is a, well, there's a dollar ninety-five pancake and sausage special here. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I mean, these are business hours. You should be spending time with uh, paying clients. Yeah, well, I had to eat breakfast anyway, didn't I? Besides, I promised we'd talk about your future once you'd been out for a few days. I wish there were some way I could repay you, Mr. Randall. Oh, there is. <clears throat> You can stop calling me Mr. Randall. No, I'm serious. You've worked so hard for me. You've, you've done so much. I mean, I'll never understand why. Well, it's been very easy. Maria, have you given any thought to our discussion? I mean, about how you'd like to get involved with prison reform? I had been thinking about it, but no real decision yet. Have you ever considered becoming a correctional officer? What? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it would be very hands-on reform. You, you'd be right where the action is. Have you seen Maria? Mm, why do you need to see Maria? I called the warden at Women's State Prison this morning. I wanted to arrange another visit with my mom. That's great. Yeah, but the warden told me that as of yet, regular visitations won't be allowed. Oh, no. Well, do you think Maria can change their minds again? I hope. If I can't see my mom and she starts to think that I don't care, she'll never have that surgery. Mail call! You guys want some fresh squeezed OJ? What, are you giving out freebies? You sure you can spare it? I said juice, Ricky. Not the stuff you were guzzling last night. I've already had breakfast, thanks. Uh, here's something for you, Debbie. I don't subscribe to that. What are you looking at? Just a pretty girl. Don't you think she's pretty? <laughs> well, I'll oh, be. It's me. It's the picture you took. You're famous, Debbie. <laughs> Why didn't you say anything? I, I wanted to surprise you. I can't wait to show my mom. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Why wouldn't I? Well, I gotta take some shots for the brochure. And I better get to work. <laughs> Thanks again, Brad. you liked my picture. So Brad's in his head work a camera. Big deal. Why are you such a jerk? Why is he such a priss? You know, I got home last night, he gave me this big lecture about drinking. Well, why don't you listen to him? He's about 20 times smarter and more mature than you'll ever be. Oh, yeah? I bet you wouldn't say that if you weren't your boyfriend. <laughs> He's not my boyfriend. Oh, no? No. Oh, you just like him to be. Maybe I would. But for now, he's the best friend I got. So keep your snide remarks to yourself. I wish I could have handled that better. What did you tell him? That last night was a mistake. 
that I get a little careless when I drink too much brandy. He didn't like that. I didn't think he would. He said I'm trying to sabotage things before they even get started. That obviously I'm afraid of relationships. <laughs> you bet I am. Oh, honey. He also said he's not giving up. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, sissy. It's only going to prolong the agony. Excuse me, Miss Meadows. Jerry, what are you doing back? I need to speak to Sissy. What is it, something about Ben Cronin? I'm afraid it's your son-in-law, Ron Webb. He's been in an accident. Oh, dear Lord. How serious? He's in pretty bad shape. I'm sorry, Sissy. I know how close you and he are. Poor Lorraine. She must be having a terrible time by now. She's never coped well with things like this. All her life, her father, Ron, and I have tried to protect her from, from these sorts of situations. Then you need to go to her, sissy. She needs you. But what about you? Don't worry about the inn. Just go. I'll do the cooking, sissy, and Debbie can help out with the cleaning. The important thing is that you're with your family right now. Now, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Why are you taking pictures in here? Oh, it's got the best view of the lake. Well, don't you know who stayed here? Faith Cronin and Tony Osorio. Two people who got murdered. Well, nobody has to know that, Debbie. Yeah, well, I just think it's creepy. But of course, if you say it's okay, I respect your opinion. Thanks. How late are you going to be shooting today? Uh, not too late. Why? Well, since you've been back, we really haven't had a chance to hang out together. Yeah, I've been pretty busy. I thought maybe we could take a walk around the lake or something tonight. Look, Debbie, I like you a lot, but between trying to make enough money to live on, getting a career off the ground, and rebuilding a relationship with my mother, my time is pretty much taken up. I'm not asking for that much time. I just can't commit to anything serious right now. And anything less wouldn't be fair to you. I'm sure there are plenty of guys at school that can give you the attention you deserve. The important thing is that we're friends, right? Right. Well, I gotta get going. I'll see you later. <sighs> plenty of guys. Right. Hey, sweetie, what are you doing in here? What's wrong? Nothing. Brad said he can't see getting serious with me. What? Hey, I can tell by just looking at him that he feels more for you than that. He's a typical man. Scared. Yeah, but what can I do about that? I bet if you started seeing somebody else, he'd come around. You really think so? Mm-hmm. I know men inside and out. And making them a little jealous always works. Crystal? You just saved my life. <laughs> hey. Well, how you doing, Kat? What do you think? So, how does it feel being on the outside again? Pretty good. Too bad you'll never find out. What are you doing back in here? I need to talk to the warden. Come on, let's go. I can't waste all day. T take care, Kat. Yeah, you too. Come in, Maria. I appreciate you seeing me without an appointment, Warden Grayson. Well, I'm happy to. First, I wanted to thank you for um, arranging Brad and Cass' visit. It was really important to both of them. I agree. 
I hope you'll also agree that uh, Fisher keeping Brad from seeing his sick mother was wrong. Officer Fisher was exercising his authority in what he thought was a justifiable manner. I thought it was an injustice and I'd really like to do something about that type of abuse. How do you propose doing that? I would like to become a corrections officer. Really? Before I was pardoned, Nell had actually talked to me about prison reform, and John Randall thinks that working as a guard would be a very hands-on way to make a change for the better. Do you realize what you'd be letting yourself in for? A former prisoner becoming a guard could face a lot of resentment from inmates. But Warden, having been an inmate, I'll have insight into problems that no other guard has. I really think that I can make a difference. Why don't you fill out this application? How much work did you avoid this morning? You don't think I pull my weight around here, do you? You know, I work as hard as anyone does. Knock it off! I don't want your germs. God, why are always on my case? Because I think that you are. You're kind of cute. Huh? Thought that ever since you got here. I guess I just didn't know how to say it. Mm, it's about time. I guess I decided there was no reason not to admit it. Joe told me to remind you about the bundle of laundry. He wants it done today. <clears throat> Listen, um, you don't want me doing laundry by myself. Maybe we should uh, try something else together. You're disgusting. Your mother's here. Hello, Mom. Hello, Lorraine. I had to come. Thank you. How is he? Not good. He's unconscious. They can't tell me yet if he'll even pull through. How did the accident happen, Lorraine? They don't know. They're not even sure it was an accident. Lorraine. I, uh... Do you mind if I stay? No. Hello. Hi. You must be Judith Ann. Yes. I'm your Aunt Emily. I didn't know I had an Aunt Emily. Well, you were only a little girl when I last saw you. Wasn't she, Lorraine? Yes. Would you like some coffee? Yes, thanks. Cream and sugar? Just cream, please. I can't believe it. An aunt I didn't know about. I, uh... I thought it was best to say I'm her aunt. Yes. Perhaps that is best. Ron doesn't want me to come and live with you, does he? No, it isn't Ron. I 
don't want you. I couldn't stand it if one of my friends found out about you. I will not make my family pay for the mistake that you made, Mother. I paid for that mistake, Lorraine. Yes. Well, you're not coming to live with us, and that's all there is to it. Emily? Well, she went for a walk. She won't be long. Why didn't you ever tell us about her? No. I thought we had. No. Did Andrew ever meet her? No. It's too bad you left him at school instead of bringing him here. She seems nice. Yes. Very nice. I didn't think they'd ever let you out. You hoped I'd die in there? Yes! I have never really forgiven you for what you did. And since we've moved into the new neighborhood, I have tried to forget you. I want a clean break, Mom. Dr. Davis, telephone. Hi, Aunt Emily. Hey, Maria. Oh, could you cover for me? I want to go to the post office. I want Warden Grayson to get my application by tomorrow. I don't know. What's the big rush? I have to start working. You are working. Here. And we really need you. Well, the prison needs me more. Maria, why do you think you can change the system? Nobody else ever has. Well, thanks for the vote of confidence, Crystal. I'm only saying this because you're my best friend in the whole world. Well, then you should be supporting me, not fighting me. For Pete's sake, Maria. It was hard enough getting you out of that place. Why do you just want to go right back? Crystal, I already explained that You don't to think you. you deserve the pardon, do you? You think you still belong in prison. Oh, don't be ridiculous. The governor said you're innocent. He's forgiven you. Why won't you forgive yourself? You listen to me. I am not doing this to imprison myself. Then I'd think twice before I drop that thing in the mailbox. Because the officers in that place are just as locked in as we were. Hey, cookie! Ah, not so fast. Those are for dessert tonight. Besides, I baked them. Oh, in that case. <laughs> Hey, where are the supplies? Supplies? The ones I asked you to get at the market. Oh, those I forgot. Hey, those are for dinner, Ricky. Hmm, they're a little chewy. Well, then keep your mitts off. Since little Ricky can't be dependent upon, I'll go to the market myself. I'll be back in a few. You need any help? I'll go with you. Thanks. No, Brad, just stay here and make sure there's some cookies left when I get back. Jeez, what's the big deal with some lousy cookies? They're not for you. Oh, Mom will never know. Special cookies for a special guy. Hey, thanks. Listen, Ricky, when are you going to take me for a ride on that hot bike? I didn't know you wanted one. We can go anytime you say. Which reminds me, I got to finish working on it. Mmm. Why are you being so nice to that creep? been getting to know him a little better. He's not so bad. What's the problem? Nothing anymore. I think I got it fixed. Did you really mean it when you said you'd take me for a ride? 
If you meant it when you asked for one. How about now? Um, sure. Okay, I'll be done in just a couple minutes. Gee, you're pretty good with your hands. Yeah, that's what the girls say. I bet. Look, you're, uh, you're not going to pull what you did yesterday, are you? What? Getting me all hot and then backing off. <laughs> that's not what I did at all. I'm just a little shy. Okay, that does it. Want to go for a ride, little girl? Sure. Hold it. What's your problem, Bradster? Get off the bike, Debbie. You know, you're not a mother. Don't be crazy. Don't worry. What did the doctors say? They said I may have to consider letting them take Ron off a of life support. Oh, Lorraine. Forgive me, sir. I'm only a waitress here, and I don't know where anything is back here. Our receptionist stepped away on a personal errand. Uh, my secretary made the reservations a few days ago under the company name Marshall's Ice Cream. Well, you got an honest-looking face. <laughs> I'll trust you. Here's a registration card for you to fill out. Thank you. Would you like a Lakeview room? Uh, actually, my secretary was supposed to request room four. Well, I guess I'll have to trust you on that, too. Oh, well, if anybody else has it reserved, I'll tell them tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you tell them. Mama? Were you asleep? No. Just saying another prayer. I pray that you'd be able to forgive me. Forgive you. Oh, Lorraine. Forget about the past. No, I won't forget the way I spoke to you. I blamed you because Daddy died. And I didn't want to listen when you tried and tried to explain how he begged you week after week to end it all. The parole board asked me if I'd do it again. I told them they probably didn't understand how much a father and I loved each other. When someone says, if you love me, you free me from this pain. It's hard to stand there and keep refusing. I'm going to tell the children the truth, Mama. The way I lied and said you died all those years ago. And how I blamed you the way I did. I didn't... Honey, that's not important now. All I want is for you and Ron to be together again. Strange. How you had that decision to make about Daddy. Now, here I am, faced with the same decision. Oh, my baby. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, Mama, will you come and live with us, whatever happens? We'll see. Oh, I love him so much, Mama. And he loves you.
Would you happen to know a local gentleman named Carl Goddard? You mean Captain Goddard? Mm. His shop's right nearby. I can show you just where it is. I'd appreciate that. You need to buy some bait? <laughs> no, uh, we have a mutual friend. Joe, I don't want to talk about this anymore. It's bad enough at the antique shop. I don't want to talk about it here. I don't know what you're so afraid of. I am not afraid. Why do you keep insisting something is wrong just because I don't want to have a relationship? Because something obviously is wrong. <sighs> Look, can we just drop this? No receptionist, no cook, no, no bartender. <laughs> They're dropping like flies around here. Well, here comes the owner, Mrs. Meadows. Mrs. Meadows? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Ben Cronin. English, Ricky. You're doing it again. <gasps> what? You know, there's a name for girls like you. But if I call you that, you'll probably belt me one. How come every time I get interested, you stop? Look, you've taken us way too far. I just want to go home. Ricky, are you listening to me? Start this thing. Not till you tell me why you keep backing off. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, then get off the bike. What? Get off the bike. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, you can walk. Hold it. I mean it, Debbie. I'm sick of women always jerking me around. Ricky, please. OK, listen. I was jerking you around a little bit. Why? I'm leaving. OK, wait. I guess I did it because, because I was trying to make Brad jealous. What? You were using me? Well, it's not like that. Debbie, what's your problem? You'd rather have that Wimp than the real man. <laughs> what real man? This one. What the hell do you think you're doing here? Who are you? I was the owner of the inn the last time you visited. Joe, please. Welcome, Mr. Cronin. Thank you, Mrs. Meadows. You're... Hospitality is considerably better than your predecessors. Why are you back here, Cronin? If it's to make trouble... Don't you read the papers? I was cleared of my wife's so-called murder. My wife is Faith Cronin. I assume you've heard of her. Yes. If I choose to come back to this place in spite of the heartache it might represent, that's my right. And my business. Yes, it most certainly is. Beautiful, gracious, and fair. Excuse me. I think you're going to be very successful, Mrs. Meadows. Sissy just called to say Ron's better. She'll be back tonight. Oh, no. You don't seriously want me for cook. I don't want to alarm either of you, but you need to know. Ben Cronin's here and he's staying at the inn. What? Why? You don't think he's after Sissy, do you? Crystal, are you the one that booked Mr. Cronin in? Yes. Maria was out. Why didn't you tell him the place was booked or something? Doesn't his name mean anything to you? Well, he already had reservations, Mrs. Meadows. And no, I didn't remember his name. I'm really good with faces, you know? Faces? Forget it. The damage has already been done. We all just have to keep a good eye on him. For sissy's sake. What if I asked Jerry to watch him, too? That's a great idea, Holly. Damn, Faith. 
If she hadn't given Sissy the tape in the first place, we wouldn't have to worry about all this. That's not fair, Rita. Or a very nice way to speak of the dead. Uh, she was a selfish bitch. You know, if I didn't think that this Cronin was a threat to Sissy, I'd uh, go shake the guy's hand for polishing old faith off. I gotta go check the bar. You don't. Well, I couldn't get rid of him. Don't tell me you even tried, John. Look, I may not own this place. Oh, look, he's here, and there's nothing we can do about it. Just don't antagonize him. He's got a very short fuse. You sound like you know him. Of course not. I just know enough about him to scare me. Huh. Hello there. Uh, what can I do for you today? I'm Ben Cronin. You're Carl Goddard, aren't you? I'd like to ask you a few questions. Look, Mr. Cronin, before you say anything, I, I just want to tell you I had no idea it was you that night on the balcony. The, well, it was the night that Faith Cronin had her accident. Uh, I would never deliberately say anything against you. Uh, obviously, what I thought I saw was uh, an optical illusion because they threw it uh, out of court. And um, uh, you don't know how happy that makes me. I, I'm just sorry for any trouble I in it may have been inadvertently caused. Not necessary, Captain. <laughs> but I accept your apology. Oh, you're a hell of a man, sir. Did Tony Orsario have a boat here? Oh, yes, this one right over here. It's a bit old, but it's okay for fishing around the lake. Did Tony pay cash for this boat? Actually, yes. You and, uh, you and Tony were working together, weren't you, Captain? Well, sort of. Uh, I was helping with buying the inn, but I dealt with uh, Roy and, and others, too. Do you know anything about drug money, Captain? Drug money? No. Are you sure about that? Uh, you wouldn't be keeping secrets from me, would you? Tony got into all kinds of trouble keeping secrets. Well, I never heard a word about drug money, I swear. I, I have no reason to keep secrets from you, Mr. Cronin. Tony and I, we just talked about ways to get the end, that's all. Just remember what I said, Captain. And don't make Tony's mistake. Cronin have to say to you, Captain. Oh, Jerry. Uh, he, he, uh, he, he was interested in renting a boat. He wants to do a little fishing, I think. I should slug you. I could do some other things I'd enjoy a lot more. You're a pig. And you're a liar and a tease. Don't tell me you didn't enjoy that kiss. Don't flatter yourself. You know, it's one thing if you're playing with my head, but you're really screwed if you play with your own. What's that supposed to mean? Just admit how you feel. I know how I feel. I want to go home. Okay, Debbie, we'll play your little game. Quit stalling, Ricky. Start it. I'm trying. Look, I'm not kidding. I don't want Just to... Just shut up, okay? All right, get off the bike. No way. I'm not going to ditch you. I just need to look at it. You think I'm stupid, don't you? This is one big setup. Sure it is. I wanted to be stranded with a little lying little tease who's hot for some pretty boy. Now get the hell off my bike so I can fix it. Hey, where are you going? Home! Get back here. You're gonna get lost. Fine, go ahead. Have any of you seen Ricky lately? Yeah, Brad said that Ricky and Debbie went for a ride. A ride? Not on a bike. Yeah, quite a while ago. <laughs> is she crazy? What is she doing with that kid anyway? Holly, please take care of things. I am going to go look for him. Beautiful flowers. Are they from your garden? Yes. 
The inn is quite lovely. You've made some changes since I've been here last. Mr. Holland has done some wonderful renovations. You sell yourself short. Your own influence is unmistakable. Beauty. <laughs> Surrounded by beauty. You're very kind, Mr. Cronin. Uh, would you excuse me? Mrs. Meadows. Why don't you look me in the eye? I'm sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't. You've been listening to that man who was harassing me. You believe I killed my wife? No. I hope not, Mrs. Meadows. I am innocent. There's no need for you to try to convince me of that, Mr. Grumman. I was framed, Mrs. Meadows. I'm convinced Faith is still alive. I've come to Cedar Lake to prove it. Excuse me. I can see why you love this place. Well, I hope that means you'll come and visit. We love that, Mom. And I want you to keep me informed of all your activities. I plan to be in the front row the next time you have a ballet recital. Okay, Grandma. Give Andrew a big hug for me. I will. And thanks for being with me. I know Ron's better because you were there. Oh, honey, I'm just glad he's improved. And remember, the offer to come live with us is always open. Oh, that makes me very happy, Lorraine. Now, promise me that you'll take care of your mom for me. I will. Oh, and I'm going to see you all again real soon. <laughs> Debbie, or, or what are you doing? I thought I'd take a little fishing trip. All of a sudden? Some things you just don't plan, Rita. What's scaring you now, Captain? I just had a visit from Ben Cronin. He's got this idea I know something about drug money. Drug money? I don't, but I can't convince him of that. And while well, I'm not hanging around here waiting for him to come back. Well, don't you think it looks suspicious if you take off? Well, I've got to get out of here. I mean, there's no way I can take another interrogation like that. You leaving right away? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I might as well take Tony's boat. He won't need it. You think Cronin is that dangerous? There's no doubt in my mind. He was the one who had uh, Tony bumped off. As a matter of fact, he just about said so. What the? It's money. My God, there must be millions here. Hello, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, I'm sorry. You know my name, but I don't know yours. My wife is Faith Cronin. You know that name, don't you? Of course. You and Faith were cellmates for years. You were very close. You'd do anything for her, wouldn't you? You're talking about the tape I gave to the police. And that letter Faith wrote to you. I gave them the tape because Faith asked me to. Because she was my best friend. Now, uh, if you're going to hold a grudge or come after me for that... Oh, not at all, Mrs. Johnson. The charges against me were dropped. That's all in the past now. Well, in that case... There's no reason for you to be here, then. Oh, that's where you're wrong. You see, Faith and uh, this late associate of mine, Tony Rosario, conspired to frame me for Faith's murder. 
They were trying to get their hands on a very large sum of money. They're both dead now. Tony is, but Faith isn't. And she has that money. Oh, well, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Is it? That makes perfect sense to me. And I think you know where Faith and that money are. You listen to me, Mr. Cronin. Nothing would make me happier than if Faith were alive. But she's gone. And I know nothing about any money. Mrs. Johnson. Why are you here at Cedar Lake? The place where Faith died. I find that a very strange coincidence. I came to Cedar Lake to pay my last respects to Faith. I stayed because Mrs. Meadows was good enough to offer me a job. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. You have a very beautiful daughter and granddaughter, Mrs. Johnson. Wouldn't it be terrible if something happened to them? Just as it did with your son-in-law.